Hello, friends, and welcome to a brand new episode of TV Binge Box. I'm your host, Steve Malk, and I love television. Uh, and I am back, friends, after a couple of weeks off. Well, it was a week. Whatever. I'm back. I know that you're caring about that because you're listening or you're watching it, and I'm so stoked that you could be here to be a part of the TV Binge Box oeuvre. Uh, look, there is so much to talk about. Uh, as far as television, this week I've got three newish shows. And one of my faves from 2022 that I want to share with you, there's just so much going on. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, I'm really loving the feedback that people are giving us, whether it's in the TV Binge Box um, podcast gang Facebook group, or they're just hitting me up on social media, whether it is on Twitter or Mastodon or wherever. Um, I'm, it's, I love that television unites us, but allows us all to have our own opinions so that you can think this about a show and you can be right. And you can think this about a show and you can be wrong. Uh, but you, that's still what you think. What you love, you love. And I really, I honestly, independent of what I think, just lean into it. If you love it, love it hard. Get into it and love television because it's just one of the best mediums. And we really are in a purple patch when we talk about the kinds of shows that we can access because we're free to our television used to hold, you know, that kind of have a stranglehold on all of this. Now that this streaming and today we are leaning into some streaming stuff. It's the best place to be and it's the best place to find it. If you want to stay in touch with what's happening in, look, my iffy little life or in the life of TV Black Box or, of course, TV Binge Box, you can find all of the links at linktree slash Steve Mulk. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Steve Mulk. Super. Glad you could join us there. That would be fabulous. Uh, of course, one of the great things about uh, a podcast or, or a video um, cast, if you're watching this on Spotify or on the TV Black Box YouTube, is that we live, crave your affirmation and encouragement. Mm. So if you can rate and review the podcast wherever you find it, if you can give it big thumbs up on um, uh, uh, YouTube and maybe even subscribe, like and subscribe. Oh, I can't believe I've become that person. Uh, and whatever you do on Spotify, because I don't understand it properly, because I'm an old man. Please do those things. That would be super great. And help TV Binge Box, the story of loving television, get out there and get into people's faces. Now, as I said, I've got four big shows, three that are new-ish, and one that is uh, one of my faves, absolute faves from 2022. So let's kick off with one of the newies that you might heard a lot about from the Golden Globes. Okay, so if the store has 10 potatoes, right, and you take away two of them, how many potatoes would the store have left? Janine, what did I say about taking my potatoes from the lunchroom? But visual learning is so much better. Well, guess what? Now you have zero potatoes. I'm Janine Teagues. I've been teaching here at Abbott Elementary for a year now. The staff here is incredible. I finally feel on top of things. Cheese steak. This is a classroom, not a hoagie stand. Hoagie! We had it on the board. I know this school is rough, but we make do. Looking for Miss Coleman? Hello. I'm the sub. I thought one of my colleagues here hired a stripper for me. <laughs> okay. I'm teaching a lesson on gravity. There have been three presidents since this one. Here's where I taped in the others. We do this because we're supposed to. It show sure ain't the money. I can make more work in the street. Easy. Abbott Elementary absolutely swept the poo when it came to comedy uh, on uh, the Golden Globes. And look, I would expect would do the same thing for the Emmys this year. It is a mockumentary style sitcom um, that follows in, uh, look, honestly, the, the very hefty uh, and weighty shoes of The Office, the US version particularly, but also the UK and Parks and Rec. And with good reason. Now, it was created by and stars 
uh, an excellent African-American uh, writer and comedian, Quinta Brunson. She stars as Janine Teagues. You will have met her in that opening trailer. Uh, and she is a teacher at uh, Abbott Elementary, a very poorly funded, predominantly black school in Philadelphia. That's a pretty good setup in itself. Um, it, it leans into that kind of mockumentary style, um, kind of uh, documentary style approach where it's here's stuff that happens, there'll be some jokes, and then here's a talking head to talk about it or to set it up or to follow along for it, just like The Office and Parks and Rec. Now, it has good bones in that regard. Uh, in fact, Randall Einhorn, who directed a bunch and is a uh, co executive producer or an executive producer with Janine, uh, sorry, with Brunson, wow, with Quinta of Brunson for Abbott Elementary, started his um, well, most popular career and certainly his directing career as a cinematographer on the US office. Uh, I've been listening to the Office Ladies pod and re-watching the office uh, be because of that and episode by episode, and they were talking about all these opportunities that were given to cast and crew to write when they hadn't written or direct when they'd never directed or act if they've only ever written and all of those sorts of things. And Randall has come a long way and does a great job in directing this and really helping you feel like it's that documentary approach. There's no laugh track. So that means they have to lean really heavy on the jokes and it is smart and it is funny and it's sharp and it doesn't always land. So whereas the office I felt was a very generic could hit anybody because, you know, if you've worked in an office, there's stuff that, that feels like it's at home there when it comes to Abbott elementary, because it leans so heavily into the American schooling system, particularly the public schooling system, which is so poorly funded, and then particularly in a predominantly black neighborhood in Philadelphia, which again is somehow even more poorly funded. There just there were some touch points that I didn't connect with or it didn't hit. Now look, there are some universalities within the life of the show. Teachers need to be appreciated and paid more. Schools need to be funded better. Public schools need to be funded better. And let, like, let's do that. That's great, and I'm all for that. And and to that end, I can push through the things that maybe grated on me or I didn't understand for Abbott Elementary and and enjoy it. It 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 puts the effort onto the viewer to buy in and get the joke because it's not here's your laugh track. I don't want to talk about that ninety show, but let's push past that. It's not your multi cam laugh track sitcom. It is a single camera. Here is the joke. You will get it or you won't get it, and move on. The first episode, the pilot, was a little rough for me. I just went, yeah, okay, you're setting a lot of stuff up here. There's not a lot of jokes comparatively. And look, to be frank, same with the first episode of both the UK and US officers. There wasn't a lot of jokes. It was setting a lot of characters up. So, I mean, that's that's fine. It, I did warm to it. I did find myself, by the time I admittedly got to about episode six of season one, I was I was loving it a bit more than certainly the first episode. I'm going to let it rest and come back to it because I, I want to see if, you know, connecting into that that universe draws me in the same way that particularly The Office and Parks and Rec did. It is hard to feel like it's not an imitation and therefore a poorer version of The Office and, and Parks and Rec because they both just seem to do what they did so well. And this is a breath after those things. So there has been a beat of time where there's not been those shows. But that's also allowed particularly the office to just land in in popular culture in a way that everybody knows it everybody talks about it or a lot of people and even younger viewers are capturing it that said i warm to it you may not and that's okay you know like i said at the top we love stuff we don't love stuff uh, as I said, it was created by and stars Quinta Brunson. It also stars Tyler James Williams, Janelle James, and Lisa Ann Walter. And big, look, big shout out um, to the the older teacher, the older African American teacher that uh, Janine just looks up to and idolizes. She plays, she's perfect. She just plays it so straight and so hard. And uh, take no shit and take no prisoners. I've had a teacher like that. That's, that in part is what helped me warm to it. Abbott Elementary. There are two seasons. All of season one is on a Disney Plus under the star tab right now. Season two has 13 of the 22 episodes rolling out uh, with in America, and I'm sure we'll get it here in Australia. Um, season three coming, given all of the awards, it makes sense. The remainder of season two is dropping weekly on Disney Plus. It's on star. I hope you dig it because I sure as heck did.
Now, uh, just a bit of a warning. If you're someone that um, thinks that cancelling things or, you know, and, and I know that I say that word and it has a whole bunch of stuff dripping onto it. Look, if you hold a particular view of Harry and Meghan, you may not like this next show or this next person, but I'm not your real dad. Oh my God. You're not frightened of mice. There he goes. He's actually underneath your wheel. As soon as you move, you're gonna kill him. Oh shit. Oh, roll back. You just killed that poor mouse. I'll bury him. He lives! <laughs> so I could do another bag, you can cope with one load. You know, grain guy. If you can't go on, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're better. Yeah. Here's my plan. Cows. No, no, no. Stop it. I'm being attacked by a cow. Cows might get tuberculosis because of all the badges. You can't shoot them. Nope. That's the... Nope. You don't just hit it with a hammer. No, you absolutely do not just hit it with a hammer. My next plan, a restaurant. You can eat cock. OK, more chilies. <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I feel it for you. Oh, that is fantastic. Welcome to Agriculture, Health and Safety. No, no, no shit. Ah! Oh my god! I had to clear up the dog shit while my sausages were cooking. Your dog's but your you, shit. Honestly. What a twat. Drop me off over there. Where? Just by the red carpet. I'm not dropping me by the red carpet. Why? I am not your chauffeur. Go and park the car. Shut up. The restaurant's a huge amount of work. This whole menu is basically a beef menu. Everything's ready to go. I just need West Oxford District Council to say, good idea. The applicant's conduct is shameful. It indicates a give me an inch and I'll take a mile attitude. Shit, 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 shit. I like a beer on a hot day. I love yeah. the smell of beer. Yeah, a couple of these off you make with the pickled onions or something. Like the Agberg, whatever it is, isn't it? Isn't it? The wise words. Wise words. Jeremy Clarkson is um, Britain's best known but least qualified amateur farmer, and he returns for season two of Clarkson's Farm. Before I get into it, Jeremy Clarkson wrote a not very nice piece about Meghan Markle, particularly. And because of that piece, a lot of people that already may have not liked him, but certainly even some that did, decided they didn't like him even further. Amazon have decided that at the end of the contract that they have for him with his current series of the Grand Tour and this season of Clarkson's Farm, they are parting ways with Jeremy Clarkson. So you don't have to watch this show. You can get upset about it all you want. That's okay. Um, I agree. I don't think he should have said those things about Meghan Markle because what does he know, quite frankly? Uh, he's a pompous buffoon, and that's why Clarkson's Farm works and why he should never write an opinion piece again. So what was intending to be another series in the great Clarkson's Farm franchise will now be the second and final series in the Clarkson's Farm franchise. We are back on Diddley Squat Farm, his uh, fairly large track of land in the Cotswolds. And all of the friends that we love from season one are back, including Caleb, his uh, farm manager come farmhand, come uh, tractor driver teacher, to show him how to actually run the farm. His girlfriend uh, with the beautiful Irish little Lisa is back. She's running the farm shop. Uh, Charlie, his um, accountant, uh, slash, you know, kind of the, the one who brings the home truths is always there. And Gerald is indecipherable, as you probably heard in that. But look, it's great. It is so funny. And I love that. I think this is probably the most accurate Clarkson that we get because, I, particularly, his girlfriend Lisa would say, Who are you? That's not who you are. This is Jeremy Clarkson 
just being pompous, being a buffoon, being someone who might have the best intentions, but has way too much money and therefore just leans into money solves the problem or I know everything and that's how it works. If you don't buy that that premise, you won't love Clarkson's Farm. I buy that premise and I love Clarkson's Farm. It's actually, and because it's filmed at a really important time. So this is, you know, in Britain, a time when farmers are facing the impact of Brexit and what that means for their crops and the prices of their crops. Subsidies about to fall out the arse, so it doesn't it doesn't help them in their farming stakes. They're forced to diversify. So Jeremy, who, if you remember last year, only just started to work out how to plant crops and thought that sheep might be an idea. Um, spoilers, the sheep didn't pay off. Uh, he's decided to go even further and he's going to open a restaurant. He's going to grow all of the food that they need in that restaurant, particularly the beef. Welcome to some cows into the family. Uh, and, you know, that you can have chicken uh, and eggs, of course. And we get that marvellous line, you can eat cock. So, mm, welcome. Uh, all of that sort of stuff that will help. And, of course, add to the biodiversity of his farm. So he thinks he's got it all worked out. Diddly squat is going to be monster. Now, here's the thing. In the first season last year, his entire annual profit for running the farm was 144 pounds. Full stop. Not 144,000 pounds. 144 human English pounds. End of story. So farms are busy and his is about to get a whole lot busier, particularly as now he has to appeal to the council again for further planning and approval and the community have to approve. And you can imagine what happens when a famous person does something in a little sleepy village in England. Everybody turns up so they get their face on camera, causing all sorts of problems for Diddly Squat for the town. Uh, look, I really enjoyed season one of Clarkson's Farm, all of which is available on Amazon Prime Video right now. Season two um, kicks off shortly. Um, I'm dearly going to miss this series, particularly if only for Caleb, the, the farm manager, farm hand, and for his just consistent ability to arrive within seconds of Jeremy doing something incredibly stupid so that Caleb can correct him and sort him out and, of course, give him shit six ways from Sunday. That we should all have Caleb in our lives, please. Clarkson's Farm, season two and final season, uh, will be eight episodes long. It goes for, uh, sorry, it, it, they drop weekly and it starts, well, the first episode's out now, right now on Prime Video. So if you liked Clarkson's Farm season one, here's season two. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend it to you, Clarkson's Farm was fun and stupid and Jeremy went and ruined it. Our next show is dearly loved as well it should be. Love music, trivia and comedy. Well, new rock quiz will blow your amp. The award-winning Australian music quiz show is back. Revamped, remixed and dialled up to 11 in a brand new home. It's everything you love. Incredible live performances, Aussie icons, the rock quiz orchestra... Questions. So many questions. Oh, and there's us two as well. Yeah, we're kind of like the bonus track. Kind of. The best rocking night in, unquestionably. Rock Quiz begins February 24 on Fox 8. It's back, friends. Rock Quiz is back and it's bloody great. It's bloody great. This is the perfect Australian music show for music nerds everywhere. Now, of course, they don't just focus on Australian music, but it is a big part of Rockwiz and, and what it makes it to be. It's on Foxtel for season 15. Uh, so it has been on SBS for a long, long time and built up more than a cult following. It was just you go to the live recordings when you get the chance and then you go and watch it when it's on SBS. You watch it when it's on air. And, and SBS, to their credit, have 
played you know, the episodes on repeat and it's eminently watchable. It's always so fun. And it's always really surprising because it's not just punters who might love music and you have to love music to get onto the stage. It's also like incredible performers that get to sit one on each team in the quiz format and be engaged in it. It's certainly great. What we notice with the Foxtel version, season 15 of Rock Wiz, look, our favourites are back. Julia Zamiro is our host. Brian Nankervis is our MC and uh, Brains Trust. Uh, Dougald is back. The Rock Wiz Orchestra is back. Slight change in the lineup, but still always as tight and wonderful as ever. Live music, or at least live to tape music, is back. And, and that's always underpinned, you know, the key part of what Rock Wiz is. Uh, and that is that we get to have live music on our on our television screens, not just from the musical guests who appear and, and play with the, the orchestra. The orchestra obviously provide the musical accompaniment and stings and those sorts of things, part of the game. But then always the, the top and tail. So the top is introducing and then the tail is let's get our musical guests together and get them to sing something, play something. That has, has been a golden part of this format and so good. Now, what we notice on, on the Foxtel iteration of Rock Quiz is that it's shorter, sharper, just as funny, uh, but it only goes for 30 minutes. Um, and of that 30 minutes, I noted because, of course, they want to keep the format pretty tight. The first 10 to 15 is a bit of banter with the the the, the, the punters, the people who've made it onto the, the stage, and then two performances by our two musical guests. So that's the bulk of the show. Done that. In, out, happy. There is some quizzing, and then, of course, there's a final song. Also, they've moved away from their spiritual home of the Espy at St Kilda, and they've moved into a studio, which, look, I'm, I understand it makes sense. It's a reflection of probably smaller budgets that mean that Rock Wiz can be brought back to life um, in both those things. A live, like live music in the Espy in Australia, synonymous. They are built together. Um, in a situation like this, it costs a lot of money to record a TV show out of a studio. And you have all sorts of noise issues and, and post-production issues that you have to address. Whereas at least in the studio, you can control that a little better and it makes editing easier and, and it just brings the whole process together a little sharper. So I'll, I'll give the production team and the producers that. I understand probably that's why that's happened. I don't want to say it feels like it's lost a bit of its heart, but the SP is special. So not being wedged into a little stage at, at, at the front of the ESPY, um, sorry, the Esplanade Hotel at St Kilda, the ESPY, um, just means they've got a little bit more space, bigger audience, tiered seating for the audience, you know. Um, and all of, all of that's great. It's fine. Um, the important thing for mine about Rock Wiz is that this is a love story to the music that fires you up and the music that moves you from the inside out. It is absolutely deeply found within the music industry and not just rock and roll, though that is a big part of it. It really appreciates and loves all music and it acknowledges that everybody loves the stuff that they love. Zamiro is, is a fabulous host uh, and delightful to have her back uh, on our screens hosting Rock Wiz. Uh, the, they have been doing live shows and keeping the Rock Wiz brand alive and getting around the country. And I think that's, also where it really excels. That is delightful stuff to go and watch a, a live rock quiz, um, you know, at your QPAC or at your performance place, wherever it is. It's fun. It's energetic. Uh, and a lot of the fun stuff, as you'd imagine, happens around the game or in the questions. And that's a part of why a 30-minute show, it's so tightly edited, you miss that. So the audience being in the room get to have a whole lot of fun and we get to appreciate it, but we just don't get to hear or see the same stuff. It's certainly leaner, it's fast, it is sharp as ever, and I love Rock Wiz. This show for mine is one of the best ways to discover new artists and be reminded of just how great some of the greats are. In the words of a, an Aussie icon who possibly needs to hang his hat up nowadays, do yourself a favour. Rock Wiz season 15 will be eight episodes long. It's uh, airing weekly and it starts Friday the 24th of February. So that's like another week and a bit, two weeks before it kicks off on Fox 8. Um, it will probably be on binge, though don't quote me on that. I would expect that it will be. Rock Wiz is phenomenal and you should absolutely dive into it, particularly if you love music. Now, I want to give you this little special one. This is my... 
One of this this one surprised me. Here's one of my favorites from 2022. Hey! It's a little bit early to be doing that, isn't it? It's 12:30. Fuck, really? Nice underpants. Oh. I lost my sister six months ago. You know, I keep trying to go through her stuff and I get kind of stuck. What a shitty year, huh? <laughs> Love you too, Dad. <laughs> I'm so sorry about Holly. She was a few years ahead of us, right? No, I, I knew I recognized you. No, you didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I want to know. I mean, what are you doing with your goddamn life? <laughs> I came home so I could take care of Holly because nobody else wanted okay, to. Okay, right. So that was one year. Babe, what should I eat? The Mexican casserole's really good. There she is. I used to love watching you sing. You're so joyful. You got the voice of an angel. What are you going to do? Here's a little invite to this thing I do. I think you'd really like it. Welcome to the fourth ever choir practice, y'all. Come on. This isn't like officially sanctioned. <laughs> nice to have you back home. One of my favorite singers in the entire world is here with us tonight. Come on up here. I haven't done this for a long time. God, I can't believe I like know you, know you now. You're a big fucking deal. Uh, somebody somewhere popped out of nowhere for me in 2022 and it um even just watching that trailer made me emotional because i loved it so much and if you're not watching it you would have missed the tagline that that appears on the screen if you don't fit in find the courage to stand out oh mate this is an incredible story uh written by hannah boss and starring Bridget Everett, who stars as Sam, who uh, is the, the central character of this story, she returns to her hometown, a farming community of Manhattan, Kansas, as she deals with a personal midlife crisis after the death of her sister, uh, one of her sisters, and finding her place as a queer person within this community where she was raised. It is a story that is, is born in trauma, that recognizes that there are few perfect endings and that it is so important to be known to just have people know you um is vital and part of that process for sam is connecting with uh, an old school friend that she kind of didn't know joel who's played by jeff hillier uh hiller and um engaging in choir practice and and it is it choir practice is held at, at Faith Presbyterian Church in the town, and it is this sanctuary for queer people in the town that they can just be themselves. Um, some of them are proud and out and living their best lives, and who gives a hell what people think? Um, and others are not, and others are struggling to find their place and understand who they are and how the person they long to be can be there real life in in this story we are reminded that uh it is life is vibrant and heartbreaking and joyous and being loved being known is so important and so vital it's got it's set against this farming community a dysfunctional family family trauma infidelity growing confidence finding friendship 
it, it, it has everything across seven episodes. It also stars um, Mike Haggerty, who plays Ed, that's Sam's dad, Mary Catherine Garrison, who is Sam's other sister, Trisha, um, and and their unique relationship between the three of them, and, and, and Sam's mum is still in the picture as well, but how they do get on and how they don't deal with um, the passing of the, the sibling and, and daughter and what that even looks like. And then that's before we even start to talk, what does it mean to be queer in middle America, Midwest America? Um, and what, what that, the self-deception and the cover-up that you have to offer sometimes to just get by. And, and also what it means to fully embrace your joy in your life. And that's where we meet Murray Hill, who plays Fred Rococo, who's a soil scientist um, and is amazing. And, and I loved, 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 I cannot recommend Somebody Somewhere highly enough. All seven eps of season one are available right now on Binge and Foxtel On Demand with season two coming in 2023. It's a HBO product. <sighs> I just, I just can't recommend it highly enough. It's not an easy watch. It is funny as all get out. It will break your heart as easily as it will mend it. And I just encourage you to invest in those characters because holy shit, it's worth it. It's so good. Somebody somewhere. I love it. I loved it. One of my best of 2023. Sorry, best of 22 by a long shot. It was so good. And friends. That is this week's TV Binge Box. I've rabbited on a little bit long. I apologize. Um, there's so much that you can get involved in. Make sure that you follow or connect up with everything that's on at my link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Steve Malk. That's where all of the links are. A big shout out to my friends in the TV Binge Box podcast gang Facebook group. You guys are awesome and I'm loving hearing and seeing the things that fire you up and the stuff that you're watching and where you're finding it and why you love it or maybe why you don't love it. I'm glad that you're there and it's so good to be there. Hello to my growing 10 of followers on TikTok. Glad that you're there as well. Uh, and if you follow me on Twitter, you may notice that I'm just being a little bit more reserved. All of the real fun stuff is happening over at Mastodon. So come and follow me over there. F set up an account. Get off the bird site. Death is upon us. <laughs> you can hear it in their songs. Um that has been TV Binge Box. Friends, thank you for joining us for another week. I'm so glad that you're a part of this, and I'm so glad that we get to talk about television. I'm Steve Malk. Hot damn. I love television.